Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Worsted Willow channel. I'm Emma. You can also find me at Ravelry and Instagram at Worsted Willow. And this is my little corner of YouTube where I share all things knitting and crochet related. I typically put up podcasts, but I'm also starting to put up some other content as well. Speaking of which, this week I decided to put together a list of my favorite knit and crochet gift patterns that I've either done in the past or are planning to do or just admiring from afar. So I know there's a lot of different lists, but I am a relatively new knitter and crocheter. I started last year and so I feel like I have a lot of insight into patterns that are good coming from a place of being a beginner pretty recently. So all these patterns I think are very approachable and very accessible for beginners. Um, but yeah, we'll just get right into it. Um, I'm starting some of my making for gifts right now. I'm probably not doing as much as I should be, but that's okay, I'll catch up. So we'll start out with the accessory patterns. So I have three different categories. I have accessories, household items, and then a few other fun little things. The fun things are kind of a small section because just it filled up a lot with the other patterns, but start with accessories. So first I have a few hat patterns. My first pattern that I highly, highly recommend, it's probably my most gifted pattern, is the Muscle Burrow hat. If you have watched the any of my podcasts, I think I've had pretty much one on the needles at in every single episode or nearly every episode. So highly, highly recommend. It's such a great pattern and it's super versatile. You can use any weight of yarn from like lace to worsted and you can do it all the way from like newborn up to an adult large or extra large. So the pattern just has a ton of gauge charts. So you start knitting and you start doing the increases. And once you have enough to measure one inch, you measure your stitch gauge and then you go based off of that. So I've done this hat both in fingering weight and DK. I tend to knit my fingering weights in a US size 3 and I think I did my DK weight one in a US 5. So I do have project pages for all the muscle bros that I've knitted. I think I've knitted four or five at this point. I think I've knitted four and I have one currently on my needles. So absolutely love this pattern. It's super quick. It's a really easy travel pattern because it's in stockinette and super cozy because at its thickest you can get um, four layers of fabric. So I have one I made for myself last year. So this was my muscle barrel. I did not make this one to be slouchy or fold over, but basically you just knit a really long tube that then folds in on itself and it's also a perfect one skein fingering weight project because it uses you can use basically exactly one skein but super cozy basic hat and I love it so that is the first project on my list also forgot to mention that I did create a Ravelry bundle for all of these so I'll have that link down below so if you're interested in any of these patterns uh, you can find them there. I'll also link all of my patterns or all of my projects that I have on Ravelry as well. So that is Muscle Burrow. Highly, highly recommend. The next pattern also for the head is Braided Tunisian Ear Warmer. This is a really great pattern if you are already know Tunisian crochet and just want something quick or you want to learn Tunisian crochet. I believe it was my first project I did for Tunisian crochet and uh, Tony Lipsy from TL Yarncraft, she's a designer and she made some tutorials on YouTube as well. So it is a free pattern on her blog. You can also buy a ad free version. So great, great pattern. Um, it also works up pretty quickly because it is worsted weight held double so it is a bulkier or it's Erin weight. Um, I think I did a worsted held double and I absolutely love it. So this was mine from last year, one of the first projects I made. But you basically crochet individual strands and then 
she shows you how to braid them together and then you seam it in the back. So, and it looks adorable. So highly recommend this pattern. Uh, definitely super easy for getting into Tunisian crochet. It just uses the Tunisian simple stitch. So super, super easy there. Moving on to the next head pattern. Also, if you see me looking down, I have my computer right in front of me so I can see all the, all the patterns. Next on the list is the Pearl Beret by Pearl Soho. I made this for my mom for her birthday, so I do not have it anymore. I already gifted it, but another really great pattern and super, super quick. I literally knitted it in one day. So very, very quick. I think it only used like 30 grams of fingering white yarn. So it also could be a good stash buster project, depending on how much yarn you have left. But super cute. I'll put pictures of from the pattern designer and then also a picture of me wearing it, but pretty classic beret. Um, and then it has a little I-cord nub at the top. This pattern is also free and it's by Pearl Soho. And the last hat pattern, I figured there's one area that was kind of missing in these this group, and that is a ribbed hat. So pretty, pretty simple ribbed pattern, and no pretty popular one. I haven't knitted it for myself, but it is the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. It's a DK weight pattern. Uh, it takes one skein of yarn, and it's another free pattern. So if you like more of that ribbed pattern on your hat instead of sort of the simple stock and net stitch like the other patterns I've shown, um, then this would be a really great pattern to try out, especially because it's free so you don't have to pay for the pattern and decide you don't like it. So great first uh, hat pattern there. Moving on to mittens. So both of these are crochet patterns. I have never knitted a mitten before. I think I could do it at this point now because I've knitted a lot of socks so I kind of understand the concept of a gusset but if you asked me last year when I was holiday gift knitting or gift making I would not have been able to knit a mitten so I crocheted a lot of mittens last year and to be honest they work up so so quickly and they're such a great gift. So these are the mittens I made myself last year. They're a shell stitch mitten and I did it in a wool alpaca blend so that's why it's a little bit drapey. They're super super warm. I tried to find this pattern. I bought it off of Etsy but it's not sold by the seller anymore so I couldn't include it. So I found a couple other patterns that looked really interesting to me. So the first one is the Modish Mosaic Mittens by MJ's Off the Hooks Design. And I thought these were really, really cool. I've been really interested in trying Mosaic Crochet. I watched a few tutorials on it and it's really pretty simple for color work because you're just working back and forth and you're just skipping stitches. All you need to know is chain, single crochet, and double crochet. So very, very easy to learn and pick up, and I just think for some for a technique that's so simple, these mittens look so much more complicated, and I think someone would really appreciate getting them as a gift. And there's also a matching hat pattern, so you can make a set for someone if you really wanted to. And there is a free version of this pattern available on the blog, and you can also pay for an ad-free version for six dollars. So a lot of these do have blog versions that are free, which is really great. So I think those would be a great crochet mitten to try out. And then the other one I have is the Grace Winter Mittens by Rini Hoffman. And these are just an all over texture pattern. They'll be a little bit more similar to this one. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to find something kind of similar to this mitten since I couldn't find this exact pattern but I really liked how this one looked. Uh, the stitch pattern doesn't look too complicated and I think it gives a nice all over texture. So that is the pattern I found for crochet mittens. This one is not a free pattern, however, 
um, it's four dollars on Ravelry so keep that in mind and it is worsted weight so it would work up pretty quickly as well cool so moving on a couple of patterns for neckwear um, hopping a little bit on the bandwagon over here and I think this is pretty much in everyone's gift guide this year but that would be the Sophie scarf by Petite Knit um, so this is the Sophie scarf. It's just a really long scarf and you loop it around and tie it off and it's just very, very cute. Um, also put a picture, but it's just a garter stitch with an applied I-cord edging. But it works up super quickly. I think I actually did this entire thing on a 7 inch DPNs. It did get a little bit tight at the thickest point, but it, I didn't even have to pull out full circular needles, so that was great, and it was super, super easy to work up since it was garter stitch. I did fingering weight held double. It is a DK weight pattern, so either way you could could work through it that way. Um, also great stash buster. This was in the leftover yarn I had from the beret. So also if you wanted a cute little scarf beret combo, you could probably knit both of these in a few days. Um, definitely within a week. And you would use about a full skein of the yarn across the two. So super great pattern to knit there. And then the other neckwear pattern I found, which I've been eyeing for myself, um, is the Cargill Cowl by Rebecca Clow. And this one is a cowl based off of her Cargill um, sweater, which uses the dip stitch pattern. I actually just bought the Cargill sweater pattern because I'm going to be casting that on pretty soon. And I think the cowl looks amazing. So if you're not ready to do a sweater, the cowl looks perfect. It looks so warm. You can do fingering held with mohair or a DK weight. And I've heard from a ton of people that the stitch pattern is really fun. This one definitely leans a little less towards beginner friendly because of the disc stitch pattern. There is a small chart to read, um, but she also has a tutorial online, at least for the sweater, so potentially get additional resources. This pattern is currently three pounds on Ravelry, but until the end of November, it is a um, charity based pattern. Uh, payments so all of the proceeds currently are going to the Fistula Foundation. Um, yeah so that's the Cargill Cowl. It, I've heard it's a super squishy stitch pattern and I'm so excited to work on the sweater so definitely give that one a try. Moving on to socks. This is the last category I have for the accessories. I know socks can be kind of hit or miss on whether people want to gift it them or not. And I think socks can be a little um, scary for beginners. Uh, my One of my first projects as a knitter, though, I first knit a hat and then I knit socks because I wanted, I learned how to knit to join a Nitty Natty sock mess. So that was like my second knitting project. So I think socks are totally doable for beginners and you don't have to do a crazy heel pattern. I did an afterthought heel, which made it a lot easier or some heel patterns are just more accessible. So the first pattern is just a vanilla sock. You can find this from many different designers. I know Nitty Natty has a ton of tutorials on my Crazy Sock Lady has tutorials for Magic Loops, Nine Inch Circulars, and um, DPNs. Earth Turn Goals has a ton of resources for sock knitting. So we're just a plain vanilla sock which ignore how sad these look because I wore them constantly for like two weeks straight. But a plain vanilla sock, such a great gift. I've done this for my sister and for my fiance before, just knitting them some nice cozy socks because what's better than hand knitted socks? And a vanilla sock is a really great place to start. However, if you do want to do something a little bit more involved. I wouldn't even say that much more involved. Uh, the DRK Everyday Socks is a pattern I just started trying out and I have absolutely fallen in love with this pattern. 
So this one's great because I feel like you don't need to get the fit as exact as a vanilla sock pattern because it's a 100% ribbed pattern. So this is what it looks like. Um, I literally just cast this, or bought this off like two days ago. So, but it's 100% ribbed, so it's going to fit. You just basically need the length of their foot. And it's going to stretch out to whatever their foot size is. Also, the heel, so you do a gusset, which is just normal increasing. And then the heel uses short rows, but it's not even like German short rows. It was super, super easy. I could do the heel in like 40 minutes. So not including the gussets, just this little section, maybe 40 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes usually. Um, it was super, super easy repeat. So I think this one is... 100% accessible to beginners. The one thing is it is toe up, so you would have to learn a Turkish cast on. Um, but I found that it was pretty easy to learn and I actually prefer the knit socks toe up at this point. So definitely recommend trying it out. Uh, Andrea Mowry has her tutorial for it and Nitty Natty has a really great toe up sock video as well. And that's where I learned the cast on. So plenty of resources out there if you decide to go that route. Also, Andrea Mowry just dropped the Bear Paw Socks pattern, which is the DK weight version of the DRK Everyday Socks, so this is really great. This sock already worked up incredibly quickly, so I can only imagine how much faster the DK weight one will be. She did it for her sock make-along. She does it over Thanksgiving weekend, so starting on the Wednesday, ending on the Sunday. And so a ton of people did it over, you know, four days, five days knitting the socks. So super, super doable. You can also use two strands of fingering weight held together and use up a skein of yarn that way. So, but it would still have the same fit benefits that I think the DRK weight, DRK everyday socks do. So definitely worth checking out there. And then if you're a crocheter, I haven't tried these socks, but I saw them and they completely reminded me of the DRK Everyday Sock, and I'm obsessed with that sock pattern right now, um, as you can tell. So the Che Walk Socks by Deanne Ramsey um, has that same sort of 2x2 two two ribbed look with a very similar heel construction, but it's a 100% crochet pattern. So if you are a crocheter, you could try this pattern out and hopefully get a similar effect to the DRK every day. Um, and all these sock patterns besides the vanilla socks are paid for patterns, so keep that in mind if you are looking at getting them. All of them are within five to six dollars though, so. Moving on, we have household items. So these are great for people that Either you don't know if they would like any like wearables or they're just more practical people and they might have something in their house they're needing to replace or want something handmade that is more useful, I guess, would be the word that comes to mind. So the first is the Circle Scrubby by Red Heart Design Team. It's basically just a crochet round crocheting the round, but it uses that really, really scratchy um, cotton yarn like this. I actually made something similar. I wrote up like some pattern notes to myself, it, not an actual pattern, but I made a dual layered one so that it was something more like what you would kind of see at the store. So um, instead of just a single crochet round, it's got a double layer. So. And I love it. It Honestly, I like it more than our dishcloth. So highly, highly recommend. And you could probably make four or five of these in an hour with crocheting. So super, super quick and really easy knit gift. Or crochet gift, not knit. And then moving on, still in the washing items, but moving on to washcloths for the crochet option, I really really like the waffle stitch washcloth. I made one for myself last year and we still use it. It just has a great amount of texture and it's a super easy cabled pattern so I highly recommend it. Um, it really holds its structure better than I think just like a normal texture washcloth does. 
So this one is also a free pattern on a blog or you can get a paid for version that is ad free. And then for the knit, I really like the look of the Heirloom Cloth Set by Kristen SK. So this one has an all over textured pattern. I see a lot of like dishcloth patterns that are just garter stitch and they look fine. I just have never been super into them so I thought this one looked really cool and it comes with a lot of different sizes so it is a paid for pattern it's five dollars but I think they look really really nice and if you're going to make a ton of presents with them I think the five dollars is easily worth it so that's the washcloth. Some other household items for crochet, um, so I found both a crochet and a knit version also of Coffee Cozies. I gave two Coffee Cozies last year as a white elephant gift and they were loved by the person who got them and I think it's still a really, really good gift idea because who doesn't need a cup or a Coffee Cozy? So there's the Coffee Cozy collection by the Firefly Hook for the crochet version. And that is a free crochet set. It has like a mason jar size, a travel mug size, and a um, like Starbucks cup size. So lots of different options for how to crochet those. And then for the knit version, I found the Simple Cup Cozy by Eunice Kim. And this has just like a really nice ribbed uh, pattern with some stockinettes. So it will kind of cinch around the cup and fit really well. And then for some decorations, I made some ornaments last year and I think they were a really great simple gift idea. So the first is the Granny Square ornament ball for a crochet option. And these just look really, really cute. You get the little baubles and you crochet around them and then they fit on the tree similar to a bobble. Um, and they just make it a little bit more personalized, which I really like. So that is a free pattern as well. And then for the knit option is the mitten ornament. So you basically make a bunch of really small, cute little mittens and hang those on your tree. And if you're kind of worried about knitting mittens in general, um, might not be the best pattern, but it is worked in, uh, you can work it in a bunch of different weights of yarn. So you could try it out with bulkier yarn or smaller yarn and see how it goes. But I think these would be really, really quick to knit up and would look super, super cute on a tree. And last is the fun things category. So this was just a couple other ideas I had based off of some previous patterns I had done. None of these, I haven't made any of these, but they fall in the same realm as other presents I've given. So the first is amigurumi. So I made last year a cow for my sister, but I know not everyone wants a cow. So the patterns I found were just kind of basic teddy bear patterns. And if you use a fuzzy yarn, you probably won't even be able to tell it's knit or crochet. So for the crochet one, I really liked how the fleece teddy and bunny by Stephanie Jessica Lau looked. And it is a free pattern on her website, or you can pay $5 for the ad-free version. And both of these just, like, they had a really good size and, like, squish look to them. And she used this Gopher Fleece Sherpa by Line Brand, which just made it look, you can't even tell it's crochet at that point, which I really loved. So I think that's a super great gift if you have any children in your life. And then for the knit version, uh... Little Mishka by Emily Kinti. Don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but this uses Knit Picks Fable fur and it's a bulky weight yarn and you can't tell the bear is knitted. It looks like a sewn stuffed bear and I absolutely love it. So also a great pattern that's available for free as well. 
And last is the Stevie bum bag. I made a bag last year for my stepsister and with the crossbody fanny pack style bags being in style right now, I've been wanting to make this one for a while and just haven't gotten around to it. But this is a granny square crossbody bag that looks absolutely stunning and I definitely want to make so someone should make it for some gifts for their family. But would be pretty easy, it would involve some seaming, but would just use the granny strip, granny square pattern more generally. So, but that's all the patterns I have for you guys. There's 22 in total, and I know I went through them pretty quickly. I'm out of breath, so <laughs> hopefully, I didn't talk too quickly in this. But yeah, I was just really excited to share some patterns with you guys based on what I had knitted in the past or like made in the past and what I kind of want to make or think would be good for for beginners and yeah I'm also excited because this is my first non-podcast video so I have been thinking about my podcasting and like video schedule more generally and I think my plan going forward is to implement the bi-weekly podcast but I was just kind of sitting around this week and I was like oh gosh like I don't want to wait two full weeks to get a video up because I just love talking to you guys so much so I'm going to try to on my nod podcast weeks do some other videos so if you guys have any suggestions for me on video topics you would like to see I have a few in mind but obviously if you guys have anything else I would love to hear your ideas and also let me know if you end up using any of these in your gifts or if you have any other great gift patterns you want to share and put out there so I hope you have some great holiday making in your future bye